Good morning. Um, Susan Schillinglaw, director of the National Steinbeck Center, and I'm here with Osana Drake, who is a Stanford uh, freshman, about to be a sophomore, and William Gilley, who is a professor at Stanford. And we're again talking about being an intern, uh, summer intern, um, as a student and working in the summer for you know various uh, institutions, in this case, Hopkins Marine Station. So Asana is working with Professor Gilly at Hopkins Marine Station. So I want to start first with Professor Gilly, and who happens to also be my husband. So if I say Bill, don't, or Gilly, that's why. Uh, but I'd like to, you to say something about the course that you taught um, that where Asana was a student, and that resulted in her coming to Hopkins. Um, you mean the course that you normally teach with me, but yes. because you were director of the Steinbeck <laughs> Center, I had to do that it on course. my own this year. Um, that course is a course called Literature and Science, Views of a Changing Sea. And we um, it's meant to bring students of a, a wide variety of disciplines, freshmen, because they, they don't have majors yet, but a variety of backgrounds and interests together who are interested in the oceans and care about contemporary issues in the ocean, and we read um, literature and contemporary and historical um, scientific work um, to try to discuss it. And we use Sia Cortez by Steinbeck as a sort of a Bible, and the Gulf of California as a platform model system to relate uh, ocean problems everywhere to literature. And so we read Steinbeck and um, uh, a lot of Robinson Jeffers poetry about the Monterey Coast, and so it's a it's a great course. I I, I really like it. I've done it three years, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun when I'm able yeah. to participate. Yeah, more fun when you do it. <laughs> and Asana, what made you sign up for the course? What intrigued you about that title? Oh, uh, um, it was probably the description. So I'm someone who loves to read. I've loved reading for as long as I could read. Um, and I also love the ocean. I love exploring. I love learning about the world. And this course kind of like brought all of those loves into one. And so I was just so excited. I was like, oh, I got to take that. Because um, it, it just sounded like everything I love. Oh, good. And what is your major? Do you have any idea what your major is going to be? Yeah, I declared Earth Systems. Earth Systems. And can you say a little bit about what Earth Systems is and what that major yeah, um, entails? It's super, it's super interdisciplinary. So. Um, for, there's like different tracks within it. So some people are studying agriculture, some people are studying sustainable energy. Um, my uh, track is biosphere, so I'm working on like ecology, human planetary interactions, um, the sea, the land, how things grow, how things live, and how they interact. Oh, good. So certainly the course helped with that yeah, sort of um, appreciation of a broad view of human planetary interactions. Um, and what did you like best about the reading in the course? Or Jeffers, Steinbeck, Ricketts? Um, I don't know. I kind of, I loved all of it. Like, I'm someone who really loves poetry, but in this course specifically, like, I really loved reading Steve Cortez because it's not something I would have picked up on my own. Like, it, I don't know, I was never really, I was never really drawn to, like, classic literature, but when I read it, I really felt it. I was like, wow, like, I think Steinbeck and I would have been friends, like, if we were <laughs> alive at the same time, and like, the same enthusiasm and passion that I could feel when I was reading his words about like, the things they would find and the adventures they would go on, like, I felt like that could have been me. And so it was like, it was like really cool. It was a really cool experience. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Do you remember a particular part of the book you liked, or? Uh, I, I can't remember your project. What was your project oh, for the course? Uh, exuberance. Exuberance. So. Ah, yes. <laughs> That's right. I heard about that, yeah. She was exempted from the final project because she <laughs> gave me the idea for the final project through her exuberance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you say a little bit about what you did for your exuberance project? Um, yeah. Uh, so instead of like a normal PowerPoint, like probably I should have done, um, I just went on like a rant for like 45 minutes about how being exuberant and having joy and passion about learning and going places and just finding joy in things and how that can interact or like how that how that affects you as a person and how that's necessary to be a scientist and how it helps 
the world at large and it's just like a really cool thing that people don't really talk about like we love to we love to discuss like intelligence and like other stuff like that that's more like intellectual but just this raw joy and curiosity is something that is really lacking but you can't be a good scientist if you aren't really like passionate about what you're doing so I think it's it's just a very cool thing. Very well said. Um, I think that Gilly's love of squid is evident um, every time he talks about them and indeed I at one um, in, in during one interview you shed a tear over the death of a squid. <laughs> Um, so that certainly conveys, I suppose, enthusiasm and um, passion for your field, would you say? Um, well, I agree with Osana that you have to be exuberant if you want to do science. So you need to have a, something that really makes you want to go to the lab or in the field every day. And um, I guess I wouldn't say it's squid. It's just more of the explorations and um, seeing new things and looking under different rocks and asking questions yeah curiosity and curiosity is something you can't really teach so that's good well let's turn to your internship so what made you decide to come to Hopkins for the summer oh uh, so at the very end of Gilly's class uh, we took a field trip to the Steinbeck Center and also to Hopkins and we got to see his lab and I just remember walking through the doors and going through this lab which is filled with like all of these cool old instruments and like <laughs> giant paper mache squid and like things everywhere and I was just like what do all these things do like I've never seen this much like history and like science happening and I was just like wow Gilly do you need interns like as a joke and he's like yeah sure do you want to work for me and I was like yes I do <laughs> he's like cool I'll email Judy I was like yay um, so that that's how it happens. Oh, good. And here so, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so your exuberance brought you to Hopkins, right? Yeah, you could could say that. That's good. And what have you enjoyed doing this summer at the lab? Ooh, I love all sorts. I I don't know. I have a good time. Um, done we, a lot of things. Yeah, we've done a lot of things. <laughs> uh, we've done a lot of like dissections. So like learning how to separate all the different like layers of skin and then like isolate these like different tiny organs called chromatophores um, and then using like microscopy, antibody labeling, um, patch clamps, all sorts of things to like learn how these organs work and just like study them and it's, it's, it's really cool because this is stuff I've like never done before. Um, yeah. And it's probably cool. never again. I probably am. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, do you yeah, see the relevance cool. of it in so terms cool. of your studies to do that kind of close work with the microscopy, et cetera? Do you? Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Like, my life is still, I don't know. I haven't done a lot yet. Like, I'm still pretty young. <laughs> um, so who knows where it's going to go. But even if I don't end up doing, like, these same, like, experiments again like oh you're going to use the confocal microscope and like study the fluorescent antibodies and stuff like even if that never happens again like the stuff that I've learned like learning how to do it and watching other people do it and just the whole experience will for sure like I don't know I feel like that was really valuable so oh good yeah and remember Steinbeck said you have to look from the tide pool to the stars and back again so you've certainly been looking in the mi microscope carefully and um, I think that kind of close attention to the cellular level of life is as important as the big picture. Um, at least that's what I would say. What do you think about the value of being an intern for the summer? What do you think is most important? I, th I think it's great that sh we're doing so many different things. So it, 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 there, there's kind of been several foci, but um, as she said, uh, dissecting animals, trying to raise little squid. She didn't mm. mention that. Uh, yeah. Trying to uh, grow brine shrimp babies to feed sea monkeys to feed the little squid, um, catching squid out on the bay, um, dissecting squid stomachs, oh yeah, and statoliths, uh, all all sorts of things that I think just experiencing these different things and, and seeing a lot of different systems and tools and um, I think that's how you. Um, get stimulated as a student and decide, oh wow, I never knew I liked confocal fluorescence microscopy, but it's so cool and I'm, I'm going to go do some more of that. And So you never know what will turn you on and, and set you off on a trajectory. That's uh, true. 
I mean, if you're never introduced to it, you have no idea what the potential is. You know? And so you've been able to go out in a, a squid boat, mm -hmm. did you? And did you catch any? Yeah. You did? Yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, I didn't do a lot of fishing growing up. Um, so it was like kind of a cool new experience, like going on like a high speed boat and like just using these like squid jigs and like waiting and then like reeling. And then you pull it up and there's like three squid and a jellyfish like dangling <laughs> off of this like long, this long uh, line. And it's just, it's a really cool feeling. You're like, whoa, like I, I caught those. And now we're gonna do science with these things that I caught. Like it's like full circle, it's very cool. Oh, good, good. And well, go ahead. That's right. We're gonna grind up jellyfish arms oh, and yeah. make squid, see if the toxins affect squid uh, <laughs> sodium channels. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what you're going to do today. Uh, no, not today. Mm -hmm. Next time we go Maybe fishing, time, we'll yeah. save some jellyfish arms. Ah, okay. Smash them up and see if it has toxins that are interesting. Okay. Well, it seems to me one of the things that you're experiencing is how to ask questions and how to learn to ask questions out of, as you know, and as you, uh, Professor Gilly just said, um, you don't know if jellyfish toxins affect squid, and so that's a question to answer, and so you can pose that and try to answer it. Yes. But you made some observations that lead you to suspect they do. It's true, yeah. Like, when the squid come back from, like, from when we catch them, they have all this, like, s scarring almost and, like, white patches on their arms and on their bodies, um, which we assume are coming from the jellyfish. Like, when we reel them up through the cloud of jellyfish, um, they get stung a lot, and so it would make sense that like the toxins would affect them in some way, but we right. will never know for sure. Do they until swim we... normally when they come up? Um, not immediately. They kind of they recover a little bit over time, but hmm. um, they have a they have a little bit of a hard time. But they were swimming today in the tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So they seemed a little stunned when they came. Yeah, up. for sure. Yeah, sounds like a good project. You're on your <laughs> you're on your way to becoming a. Did you see that paper Ben sent about the neuropeptide, neurotoxic peptides from Cyenia? What? When did when did I you send that? Sent it yesterday. I thought you were on what? the list, but no. I, I looked at it. It didn't didn't look too. It looked like an interesting paper. So we need to check it out. But oh, good. Wow. We're on we're on the track. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think your greatest challenge has been um, this summer, being an intern? Mm. I don't know, like all of, like yeah, there have been some challenges, but none that I would say were really like so big that I had to like surmount them in like a really meaningful way. Like, um, like yeah, initially it was like hard, like trying to learn all of these things that were really technical and really specific um, and required a lot of like very high precision, but like you just practice and you just, you, you figure it out. So. And what are you most proud of as your summer experience in terms of what you've learned or what you've done? Um, hmm. I don't know. I just It just makes me really happy that I had such a cool experience. Um, I'm kind of proud that like for the first time I'm like living on my own like in an apartment like away from the dorms, away from like my family and I go into work and I do science and it just feels, it makes me feel like I'm kind of like an adult, which is just a cool, <laughs> it's a cool feeling when you're like 19 and like you're still kind of a kid. It's, it's interesting, but yeah, it makes me feel like I can do real work and even if I don't know everything, like the work can still be really meaningful and helpful um, and I can still learn some really cool stuff about the world and help us understand it better. So. Very well really said. Happy. That's very that's you know that's very um, impressive and inspirational. <laughs> um, I think for other interns, knowing that you know part of the internship experience is just the life experience of living on your own and realizing that you know you are an adult or becoming an adult and that you can take on responsibilities and learn things. That's that's very that's very well put. Um, how would you add to that in terms of your experience with interns in the in your lab? Um, this is the first time I've had interns that I've sort of um, haven't tried to get to do specific projects, like you know, a research project. This is more of a, uh, hey, let's try this and do this today and this tomorrow and do a lot of different things, which is kind of what you have to do, I think, uh, when you're uh, looking at um, 
things that aren't completely established how to do them. So you need to try different things and look at different things. So um, it's been really a lot of fun having <clears throat> interns that are part of a team that can do things together. So uh, I thought the best part of the summer so far was when we had the visitor from North Carolina and we were working on muscle fibers from arms and tentacles of squids trying to see how their uh, electrical properties were different and we had we always have good chalk talks and so a lot of these things are pretty high level background intensive so um, we usually start one of these little exploratory modules with the chalk talk session where we just kind of sit around and talk about <clears throat> uh, things rather than lecturing and um, and so um, we'd sit around and talk for a few hours and then we would go do some experiments and they'd learn how to do these dissections and learn how to make the electrodes and learn how to analyze the data and um, so we would sit together and do the experiments. It was, it was really um, good teamwork so it was really oh. a, a good way to, to interact with interns I think much better than assigning a project and saying okay I, let's do this and this and this and just sort of repeat the same thing over and over again which is what you have to do to really do a final research project mm -hmm. and get data that you publish and so it's, this is more exploration and, and um, exuberant science. Exuberant <laughs> science. <laughs> I like that. I mean, I, I like, you know, two things you've said. Um, one is this, the model of um, teamwork and working as a team and what can happen as a team. And I know um, you've been working as a team in terms of your internship. We're going to, you know, talk about that in a minute. But also I think um, the sense of possibility of having a almost a menu or a smorgasbord to choose from <laughs> <laughs> and that you know science is often a, a sense of possibility that's certainly what I've tried to show um, in ha having an intern at the Steinbeck Center that there are many possibilities and many kind of projects that you can work on not just one so I think the internship as a possibility um, is, is exciting would you agree oh yeah absolutely good yeah, yeah. Well, do you have any concluding remarks, anything you'd like to say in terms of? I don't know. It's, it's really, really amazing. And if anybody has the opportunity to do it, I would definitely recommend it. Good. Yeah. Yes. Um, certainly after your freshman year or any time during your, your undergraduate you yeah. career. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That um, ends our discussion of, with Osama, Osana and Professor Gilly, and thank you very much.